Wrestling fans, Boston Wrestling MWF Summer of 7 p.m. Seven nights a week has exploded online. Join the superstars and legends on Wrestling Insiders every night at 7 p.m. Spread the word. As first reported to our Boston Wrestling MWF family on Patreon, big things are happening as we wrap up our biggest spring ever and kick off our summer of 7 p.m. beginning Memorial Day night when brand new Wrestling Insider episodes premiere at 7 p.m. seven days per week. We also kick off our Make-A-Wish drive in high gear to help grant wishes to awesome kids that have been waiting over a year in many cases. After an extreme Saturday with New Jack and a demolition doubleheader with Axe, put the women and children to bed as fresh from the Shawn Michaels A&E biography, Marty Jannetty returns for a party with Marty triple header Friday, June 18th, Saturday, June 19th, and then joining us again for the WWE Hell in a Cell pay-per-view Sunday, June the 20th, taping episodes of Wrestling Insiders, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings. It's going to be a huge weekend that demands fan involvement. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information and pre-ordering option. Let's help keep wrestling legends working and great wrestling talk show content being produced. We can't do it without you. Help us explode into summer seven nights a week at 7 p.m. And then, and if, and if well, like with Bob Backlund, Backlund did not want to drop the title to Hogan. That's why the, the Sheik had to be what you call a, a the the transition the transition champion. champion because they want to put somebody in the ring that they felt could have uh, took Backlund if Backlund decide not to, to lay it out. Ed Strangler Lewis did the same thing back in the older days. Sometimes when you put a title on a guy, the hardest part was how you're going to get it off of him. Right. And there was guys back in them days, you know, that they, and they looked for guys like that. I mean, they, they searched, searched guys out like that. You know, most of you guys like Mother Gun, it was all street fighter, ex-Marine. Yep. Murdoch, rugged, you know, redneck bar fighter. You know, they were not like your regular street guys, you know. Some of them was ex-athlete, some was not. Right. Some was ex-Golden Glove fighters, you know. Like Danny Davis, he was a referee, but he also was known all over Rhode Island being one tough little SOB in the street. Not the biggest guy physically. Not the big guy, but physically. But he had that fight in him. That's right. In fact... He saved Vince Jr. life one time. How did that happen? Well, Vince went in this hotel. Danny Davis told me the story. Went in this hotel to check in or something. Danny was riding with him. And he got in a confrontation with somebody, a, a couple of guys in the, in the lobby. Well, anyway, the fight broke out. They, they started getting the best of Vince. So Danny came in and knocked out the two guys. Really? Yeah. yeah. He told me the story. Well, it's not about the, the size of the fighter, but no, the size no, of the fighter. No, no, he's he, he, what you call a heavy hand. Like, if you meet Mike Tyson, he's not a big man. But, I mean, he packed a, a power of a punch. Even though Mike Tyson, what, 5'11", maybe 205 yeah, yeah. pounds, 210. the world's biggest guy. Yeah, yeah, maybe 190, 200 at the most, I would say. What about Abdullah? Would you consider him a tough guy out of the ring? Well, a lot of people didn't know this about Ab, uh, uh, Abdullah. Abdullah was a black belt in, in, in Kung Fu, and a lot of people didn't know that. He was into the martial arts for many, 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 many years. Yeah. And, and in fact, in Japan, you know, he studied with a lot of uh, dojos uh, when he went to Japan. So Abdullah was the type of guy that could handle himself very, very well out in a, in a real fight. Did you ever know him to fight with the fans? No, Abdullah was the most amazing person in his heyday. He's the only person I can see could walk towards an audience and the whole audience move back. They were scared of him. They were scared of death. He would go up and fight you up in the up, he would go up in the bleachers. Nobody would go near Abdullah. The only other guy that I knew that had that type of ability was uh, uh, King Kong Bruiser Brody. Brody was one another of his, one. His famous rivals. Yeah, yeah, they were famous. But but the, both of them guys, if you saw Bruiser Brody or you saw uh, back in them days or Abdullah coming at you. You just move, and Abdullah will cut you. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the fans sometimes would not move. He just hit them with that blade. They'd move then. Well, they the blades are so sharp they don't know they cut, and then they see the blood running down. Did he ever gig you accidentally? Not accidentally. He was a professional. Very good. With Very the good yeah. with it. He if he cut you, he meant to do it. There, right. there was no uh, beat around the bush. But but one of my best friends. I love him to death. He had a, a wonderful restaurant, uh, 
uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. The House of Ribs and Chinese House of food. Ribs and Chinese food, which was absolutely uh, uh, delicious. And, and he gave me a lot of good advice, which I didn't listen to, re regrettably. But uh, he always tried to help me. And uh, he had a little bit of problem with uh, Kamada because uh, Kamada believed that Abdullah blocked him from going to Japan because their gimmicks were so similar. So he, you know, he, he did what he could, to, which was, looking back on it, was called business. Right. I mean, you couldn't have Kamada and Abdullah at that period of time in the same area. That's why we Vince McMahon Sr. made Rocky Johnson and myself <coughs> the first black world champion. We were the, two, the first two blacks to be on top at the same time. Normally you have a, a, a minority on top and then one on the bottom. He did it again with Fuji and Saido. He did it also with the Samoan. You know, back in the days of, uh, of Tor Tanaka, you had Tor Tanaka here and every other Oriental was here. You had Rick and Steamboat here. And anybody that was an Oriental would be, would be here, you know. And he's also doing it right now. He got uh, uh, this Oriental kid uh, behind you there. I don't know his name. Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura, and also he done it with the with the girl there. Oscar. M Oscar. So. Oscar. Oscar. But yeah. in the older days, if they put one on top, the other one would automatically. Like Tony Atler was here, S. D. Jones was here. Right. They had a a, a a main eventer, a top car guy, and then had an under car guy. But but very uh, not until the the mid '80s where they would put two of the same nationality, you know, in a top position. It's interesting. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but we did a three-hour uh, documentary with Kamala right here in this very studio, and he talked about some of his issues uh, with Abdullah trying to get him to job in Japan, take clean pinfalls from uh, Johnny Ace, John Laurinaitis. Right. He was not about to do that. And they got into a verbal altercation. Yeah, Abdullah didn't want him there. No, he wanted no. him to job out and go home. Yeah. Well, the two very memorable characters. Yeah. I like them both. But yeah. I guess you'd need them at They were in times. competition for each other. Right. You know. Shreve wanted the paydays. Right. He didn't want Kamala to get a taste. Now, well, once a book been read, is old. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the Springfield Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts, Sunday, June the 12th, 1988. In the opening contest, S.D. Jones beat the Conquistador. Barry Horowitz with the win over Jerry Allen. George the Animal Steel defeated Greg the Hammer Valentine via countout. The one-man gang victorious over George Steele, who replaced Bam Bam Bigelow via disqualification. The British Bulldogs beat Haku and High Chief Afi. Dangerous Danny Davis with the win over Sam Houston. And in the main event, Jake the Snake Roberts and Hacksaw Jim Duggan defeated Andre the Giant and Ravishing Rick Rude. If you were in Springfield Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders, Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.